Now the conference itself happened in Minneapolis at the Seventh Adventist Church, newly built church in, in Minnesota, from October 17 to November 4 of 1888. This was the 27th General Conference of the Adventist Church. They had at that point in time 25,841 members in 1888. Ellen White in September 1889 wrote this, we need also much more knowledge. We need to be enlightened in regard to the plan of salvation. There is not one in 100 who understands for himself the Bible truth on this subject. Which subject? Plan the plan of salvation. <coughs> and that is so necessary to our, our, our present and eternal welfare. So this she wrote just under one year after 1888. Now she says not one in 100 understood at that time the plan of salvation. Not one in 100. If the membership of the SDA church at that time was in 1888 was 25,000, let's round it off to 30,000 by this time in September 1889. So not one in 100 understood the plan of salvation out of 30,000, 300. Not, not 300, not even 300. So less than 300 people actually understood the plan of salvation in that time in September 1889. Now specifically, did you notice what she says there? There is not one in 100 who understands for himself the Bible truth. The Bible truth of the plan of salvation. How many of us today really understand from the scriptures the plan of salvation? From the, from the Bible by itself, the plan of redemption. How, how many of us can, can, uh, can actually teach from the scriptures the plan of redemption to someone who's, who, who, who needs to learn the plan of redemption for themselves? Um, it's important for us to, to learn from the Bible itself, just from the Bible, the plan of redemption. In the year 1899, Ellen White spoke to the General Conference, and this is what she spoke in front of the delegates. She says, we have nothing to fear for the future, except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our past history. So how the Lord led his people in the past together with the teaching that he gave them is a very important thing to remember, never to forget. Now let's look at some of the personalities that, that were involved at the conference. Some, some of the people that were involved, the main ones we're going to look at because uh, there were 91 delegates to the General Conference in 1888, but we're, we're only going to look at about five or six because these were the main characters the main people that were involved and uh, that had an influence on the whole work of the SDA church at that time. Firstly, does anyone remember who the General Conference President was at that time? Butler. George Butler, yes, George Ide Butler. Now this man, he was uh, he went through the 1884 uh, disappointment, so he had been around in Adventism in the, in the church for many, many years. He was baptized by another pioneer, Jane Andrews, in 1856. And he, he was actually serving as GC president then from 1880. That was the second time that he was serving as GC president. So this man was quite interesting. He had a very high esteem of the position of the presidency of the church, of the SDA church. 
Uh, in fact, he wrote an article when James White was president. This man, George Butler, wrote an article about the, the dignity of the, president, of the president's position. And in the article, he suggested that the people, the SDA church people, should look up to the position of the president as the people in Israel looked up to Moses. And that they should offer him the same regard, the same respect, and listen to him in the same way. James White wrote something back in the review at the time, pretty much disagreeing with this concept. Um, but these were the thoughts that this man had about the position he held. And he, he was quite an authoritarian person. Like his style of leadership was very, very sort of a little bit forceful in the way he carried his leadership. So that was his style. And um, he wrote a book on the law in Galatians. This is what the book was called, The Law in Galatians, which was one of the controversial points in 1888. And he was one of the key opponents of the message of righteousness by faith. Imagine that, the, the president of the General Conference, one of the key opponents of the message. Now, in 1888, this is what George Butler wrote to the church. We have much reason to thank God and take courage as we enter upon the year 1888. Seventh-day Adventists have never taken a stand upon Bible exegesis, which they have been compelled to surrender but on the contrary, the lapse of time only strengthens their positions. Right at the beginning of the year, George Butler digs his heels in. Uh, basically says that, uh, or sets himself up to be defeated, really, because he was not going to be compelled to surrender, as he says here, anything, any type of uh, doctrinal position that they've taken. And as we'll see, soon see that this man here was one of the most bitter opponents, one of the strongest opponents of Wagner and the message that he brought. Another really prominent person in the 1888 General Conference, who was also an opponent of the message that God gave through Jones and Wagner, was Uriah Smith. 